Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you an example of how to perform data validations with actions. I have a simple uh, e-commerce schema, um, so I'm going to perform validation for coupon. Uh, users can add products to cart and finally before placing an order they'll be able to apply a coupon code. Uh, the coupon has a few parameters uh, like a discount value, the expiry date, the count of the coupon, uh, the number of times it can be used and whether uh, is it still active or not, right? Um, so we'll uh, have to write some custom logic to check uh, all these parameters and uh, return back to the client saying that whether the coupon is valid or uh, and if it is valid then uh, how much discount has been applied and what is the tot final total price, right? Um, so I'm going to make use of Hasura actions uh, to perform this custom logic. So I'm going ahead to actions and I'm going to create a new action. So this will be a query type because we are not doing any manipulations to the database or we are not mutating any data. So I'll say type query and uh, I'll name my query as validate uh, coupon, right? And uh, the only input argument that will be sent from the client is the code, right? The coupon code. So I'm going to say code and the type of that will be string and I'll rename the output to say coupon output and I'm going to remove the input arguments and uh, I'll rename the output type to coupon output, right? Uh, so we need to return uh, whether the coupon is valid. So I'll say valid, which will be a Boolean. And uh, we need to uh, say what the discounted uh, price looks like. So I'll say discounted price. And I will also need to send discount value back to the client to say how much discount has been exactly applied so that the front end can show what the values are like. And my handler will be slash validate coupon and I'll forward client headers to webhook, right? I'm gonna click on create and the action has been created. Uh, we'll quickly uh, go to code gen and generate the boilerplate code for writing the custom logic. I'm going to make use of Node.js Express uh, to write this HTTP handler. Uh, I'm gonna click on get starter kit and I'll download the starter kit, right? So I'm gonna say wget node.js express and I'm going to unzip this folder and this is a simple express app so I'm going to do npm install to install the modules all right npm install is done I'm going to say sublime and if you look at the source code uh, it's a simple express app with the hello route uh, we'll be adding more routes uh, to write our own custom logic. If you remember our uh, action, um, we had uh, said the handler to be validate coupon. So we'll create a route for validate coupon and write our logic inside that, right? So I'm going to copy this uh, route boilerplate from the code gen. So it will be this particular code snippet that I have to copy. And I'm going to paste this here, right? So this is a simple validate coupon route, uh, which accepts uh, a request body uh, with the object input. Um, the code is basically the input argument that the query type uh, will send, right? And uh, yeah, and we need to send these three parameters back to the client, right? If it's a valid coupon or, and uh, if it is valid, then what is the discounted price and what is the discount value, right? And uh, so we need to write some custom logic to check if the coupon is valid. Um, so as soon as I receive the code, I need to be able to say uh, if the coupon exists in the database, right? Uh, so I'll have to make a fetch call to the database and see if the coupon exists. So before doing that, uh, let's test out uh, if the action is actually configured, right? And if you're actually able to get this response back uh, through graphical by making a simple uh, call 
So I'm going to start the webhook uh, by saying npm start and uh, I'm going to head to graphical. Uh, ideally we should see the new type that we've added. Uh, so I'll say validate coupon and you can see it's auto completing. I'm going to say code and uh, let's say I'm just sending some string and uh, I should be able to get valid uh, discount value and discounted price right I'm gonna click on play and uh, yeah you can see that uh, the response is coming so the action is working as expected the configuration is working now let's uh, head back to our uh, original requirement in our action uh, for the validation to work uh, we need to uh, actually query for the coupon table to see if the coupon exists uh, and to also get all the parameters of the coupon right before actually making the validation so uh, the query for that will look like coupon by pk so that i get only one object at a time and i'll have to give the code value right and uh, i'll need to get the discount value the expiry date is active and the remaining count right um, so let's convert this code argument into a variable so that we can dynamically pass in some values so I'm going to say code and it will be a string. I'm going to change this string to dollar code, which will become a variable, right? So this should ideally give us the value. So I'll just say code and I have something called April sale, which is already there in the database in my example. So I can see that the values are coming from the database for this particular coupon code. Now, the other requirement uh, in our use case is uh, we need to find the discount value, uh, the discounted value and the dis final discount price uh, before sending back to the front end, right? So we need the value of the products which are added in the cart, right? So I should be able to also get the value of the cart. Uh, so I'll say cart and I'll do product, which is a relationship uh, from cart. And inside product, I need the price of each product, right? Um, if you can go back to the data tab, we can see that the relationship uh, between cart and uh, product uh, is established because we have a product ID in the cart table and uh, there's a relationship to the product table, which means we can use a relationship called product to fetch data from the product table, right? So I'm going to make use of that relationship to fetch the cart items uh, in a single query, right? So I'm going to copy this query, uh, which we'll actually use in our uh, Node.js code to make a fetch API. So let's go ahead and uh, write this query, right? I'm going to say const coupon query. And uh, I'm going to paste this query, right? Let's do a little bit of indentation and yeah. So the above query accepts a variable called code, right? So we'll have to send that code from our request body input. So we've already declared that here and I'm going to just make use of that, that variable. Now let's import node fetch library so that we can make the actual post request to the GraphQL API. Now we need to ensure that the items which are fetched from the cart actually belongs to the user who is requesting for this. So uh, let's go ahead to the cart table to see the permission related to that. Uh, we have a select permission defined for the role user, uh, which says there's a custom check. So we are filtering for uh, the user ID, uh, which has to be equal to the session variable called Xhasura user ID, right? So what this permission does is it will ensure that the items which can be selected from this table uh, can only be uh, can only belong to the particular user ID, right? Whoever is logged in, and this will be part of the session variables that will be available in the action code. Now let's go ahead and use that uh, in the action code. So I'm going to define session variables by saying session variables is equal to rec.body.session variables, right? 
So, so server sends session variables object along with the input object to our action handler, right? So we are just making use of that to declare the session variables. Let's write the fetch code to actually make the API call. So here I'm calling my GraphQL endpoint, which is running on my local host 8080. And I'm sending the method post along with the body, which is the GraphQL query. So I'm making use of the coupon query variable that I've declared above and the variables that are uh, passed. So here in this case, it'll be just the code and I'm passing some headers. So here I'm just passing the session variables directly. Um, so this will basically ensure that the permissions are applied uh, for the particular table, right? And I am going to actually parse the response, the JSON response that comes from the database. So in case uh, an error happens, uh, we'll need to return an error message, right? So I'm just going to say if errors, then return this error message, right? And, uh, and now we need to pass the coupon data and the cart data separately. Uh, if you remember the GraphQL query that we made, uh, the coupon by PK and cart is made in a single query. So we need to pass the response of them separately in separate objects. So I'm just passing them out in coupon by PK and cart variables respectively. And my first check would be to see if the coupon by PK doesn't exist, then I'm going to say invalid coupon. I'm going to return a 400 uh, invalid coupon message. And my next two conditions would be if the coupon is not active or if the coupon's remaining count is less than zero, less than or equal to zero, then I'm going to return a coupon inactive message to the client, right? Now, if these constraints are matched, then I'm going to find the total price uh, of the cart. So I'm going to sum the product prices. Uh, for all the cart items and finally say that the discounted price will be equal to the total price minus the discount value that is coming from the coupon table. Now once we have all of this data I can return the valid to be true and discounted price would be the discounted price value declared above and discount value would be coupon by pk dot discount value right now let's go ahead and test this uh, change on graphical so i'll be now able to make uh, the validate coupon query i can send april sale which already exists in the database and i can say valid discount value and discounted price right um, so I get a successful response, uh, I get a valid true, the discount value is 100, the discounted price is 899, right? Now let me try out another coupon code which probably doesn't exist and uh, you can see that the message says is invalid coupon, right? So this is a very simple uh, example for uh, validating data before uh, sending to the client. We have used actions to extend our query type. Uh, we have added a new type called validate coupon uh, so that the client can actually call this instead of directly calling the coupon table and doing the validations on the client side. Uh, here we are doing the validations on the server side, right? That's it for this example. Uh, see you later in a different example. Thank you.